Cześć! Bez zbędnego gadania zapraszam Was na drugą część rozmowy z Pit Heineikiem, a także do oglądania tych niezwykłych przestrzeni, które stworzył wokół swojej pracowni. Zaczynamy! Twoje córki poszły, zdaje się, w Twoje ślady. Czy jest jakaś przestrzeń, w której ze sobą współpracujecie, czy one tworzą zupełnie niezależnie, samodzielnie? No, it's not, it's not mixed, although... Uh, so my oldest daughter, she lives in Amsterdam and she does our Instagram, but she, she studied uh, Art Academy and then more advertising, but what she does is sort of art photography and art film, but also as advertising, so both like free and, and for companies. And uh, yeah, so, so, so uh, she, we presented at a fair where we were attending ourselves with the gallery and our furniture, also her work, so it's fun. And uh, the twin daughters, so it's uh, three daughters. The twin daughters, they are in the showroom in, uh, in their own studio. We just finished it more or less. And they are designing, producing and selling uh, their jewelry. And the way they work is very much related to my work. Uh, I didn't uh, uh, understand that immediately, but slowly I understand it. But they have like completely their own creative path and they never talk to me about what they are designing. But they, they have uh, the, the, the not throwing away or using leftovers or being clever with machines and anything like that. They have <coughs> raised that to, uh, to like the only thing in their collection. <laughs> A czy innym niż Twoje córki, artystom początkującym dajesz wsparcie, którego sam nie miałeś na początku, jako prekursor tego nurtu? Originally, so when we bought this place, I wanted to have... Uh, I thought it would be good to have like more than only our own product to, to make it uh, uh, valuable to come. Because we, we, you know, if you only have your own designs, it's rather boring after a while. So we added a lot of themes, uh, among which the, the young designers in the studios, which, which give uh, sort of, you know, their life. They are working in the evening, here everything closes down in the evening, we're a company. So one of the ideas was to, to make like a, a, a building in which there are many different people with different skills uh, and, and different uh, yeah, the, the, we mix everything to a to a nicer nice the, the uh, in order to have a reason to come to visit and this actually works you know it's like a synergy there's a lot of synergy in it and uh, but the question was uh, if i wanted to sort of help younger people uh, after getting somewhere myself, although we're always having uh, hard times. It's never, it's never easy, so <laughs> since we bought the place it's horrible. But uh, I do feel that now, since a few years, that uh, if I'm able to help people uh, with their careers, either by presenting them or by giving them advice or by giving them, them a job or a commission, i do feel that it's nice to be able to push people a little bit in the direction and that is also uh, caused because of the building. We have so many people who visit us, but also during the Dutch Design Week we have uh, an enormous amount of professionals and also our own uh, dealers and galleries. 
So they come and then this is the opportunity to present other work from others to them. And at a certain moment we found out that we were able to make connections between designers and galleries from us, which sort of made their career start and never end. So we are more aware about that now and we, we try to help those people who fit sort of in our world and then we try to push them a little bit. We give them a, a starting point or a, yeah. W Polsce bardzo popularyzuje się DIY, czy, czyli zrób to sam, czy też upcykling, którym ja sam się zajmuję. I czy z Twojej perspektywy, człowieka bardzo doświadczonego, genialnego, znanego projektanta, mógłbyś udzielić jakiejś prostej rady ludziom, którzy są na początku tej drogi, a są przepełnieni obawami, lękiem, że oni się do tego nie nadają, że się boją, że to jest właśnie dla takich osób jak Ty, tylko bo przecież, no jak z tym zacząć? Czy mógłbyś udzielić im jakiejś prostej porady? Well, it's a little bit the, where I started with uh, in my career, but also a few times in, the, in my comments. I think it's, it shouldn't be about this theme if you think about a, a making a product for the market. The, you know, in the end it should be good. And if you use a recycled material, upcycled material or anything like that, it, this is not the goal by itself. You know, if, it, if you make something which is not natural at all with old wood, it doesn't make sense. So you always have to respect the, the, the material and, and the starting point, but also the, the end result and the, the consumer. So if you make something which, which misses a link in the whole process somewhere, it doesn't make sense. So that's why I'm so critical about Uh, this discussion in the end if you make a product it should be good and if it's good it lasts long so for example which is a, a trend now in our company is that we have people who bought a table 15 years ago and they ask us to lacquer it again so it can last another 15 years and there are also people who don't mind when it's scratched and they just use it so there's a lot of people who bought a product from us for life And if you compare this to many other manufacturers uh, who make products who, who should last just for a few years or even less, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes in our society. It's again uh, not changing consumption, but uh, making something which is better than the other product, but the fact that you throw it away after a short while It's a horrible thought. And so I think for amateurs and for people who are not into this game, because there are also, also professionals who, who make things apart from the economical system, I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for, for different thoughts. And this also might give answers or solutions, because in the economical system, you don't have the, the time and possibility to, to to even uh, experience, uh, make exper exper uh, to gain experiences or to, um, you know, to test. To challenge yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you have to, you have to, you also have to try things to find out what works and not. And uh, and uh, yeah, the economical system is only related to, to being sure of of uh, of benefit. So yes, I think there's a big role for, for uh, people who are not working in the system. Amateurs, professionals who don't want to work in it, uh, at least people who find their own way.
It's not so cold. It's, it's cold. Yesterday, so cold. Just, yesterday it was colder, I think. Good uh, morning. 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 Hello. Wow. So all of this is the production facility on that okay. side. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So this is the distribution. Yeah. This, for example, goes to the Future Perfect in, uh, in America, New York or Los Angeles or San Francisco. Yeah. And then this is the Woodstock. All the wood is, is um, uh, it comes here together. So mm -hmm. we have uh, we have it selected in colors, in uh, thicknesses, in everything. Mm -hmm. So we got some yellow. Yeah. So all the colors you see are original colors. So they have been used on fences, on roofs, on floors, on mm -hmm. uh, paneling, everything. Mm -hmm. Constructions. Mm -hmm. Zawsze, kiedy mam okazję odwiedzić czyjąś pracownię, to przyglądam się temu, jak pracuje, ale przyglądam się też temu, jakich maszyn używa, no bo zawsze warto inspirować się zawodowcami. Bardzo miłym akcentem było dostrzeżenie w pracowni PITA w kluczowym miejscu maszyny marki, na której zakup też ostatnio się zdecydowałem. So, do you do you make rounds every morning, inspecting every area? No, but I, I walk around. Quite often. Yeah, yeah. How big is the area, like walk-wise? The whole, the whole building is 10,000 square meters, so uh, yeah, that's it. How many people work here? We have uh, already for years, they're like uh, around 100 on the payroll, so which is 60 full-time. So the people are employed, 60 on full time, but there are also people from outside. It's a huge business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Great. This is one of my daughters. She's always also giving it to yeah, yeah. Hey, nice. Hey, hey. Hello. Hi. My name is from uh, John. George. Hi. From America. Hi. Oh, that's nice. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, and they come uh, everywhere in Eindhoven because they're going to do the project in America. They're yeah. going to do it in the John nice. likes uh, if they see the factory because they're going to do the same. Okay. You have to warm the things on, eh? Yeah, I get this couch. Yeah, you know. Thank you. It's great to meet you. We'll see each other. Pit, bardzo Ci dziękujemy za spotkanie fantastyczne i za to, że mogliśmy z Tobą porozmawiać z czym się wyróżnieniem absolutnie. We would like to thank you very much for the opportunity yeah. to meet you, to see the place and yeah. they feel very, very blessed for the chat with the chance. Okay. So hopefully mm -hmm. it's going to bring some light of your work into okay. our corner of Europe. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Myślę, że w ostatnim ujęciu widzicie wyraźnie, jak byłem poruszony możliwością poznania Pita i porozmawiania z nim. No takich ludzi nie poznaje się przecież codziennie. Wypiliśmy jeszcze ostatnią wspólną z Asią kawę w restauracji hotelowej na miejscu i wyruszyliśmy na północ Holandii na spotkanie z Sylwią, kuzynką Mariusza, od której kupił on przy okazji samochód. Zafundowaliśmy też sobie jeszcze dwudniowe zwiedzanie Amsterdamu i Hilversum. Wszędzie było pięknie, oglądaliśmy fantastyczne zabytki, niesamowite kanały, dopisywała nam pogoda, ale wiecie, wrażeń z pracowni sklepu Pita nic już w moich oczach nie przebiło. Czekało nas jeszcze tylko tankowanie do pełna, ustawienie nawigacji i ruszamy w ponad 10-godzinną podróż do Polski. Mam nadzieję, że ta przygoda, którą się z Wami podzieliliśmy, Was również zainspiruje. Może do odwiedzenia Pita Weindhoven, może do stworzenia czegoś z drewna odpadowego jako pełnowartościowego materiału, a może do nadania swojej hobbystycznej działalności twórczej komercyjnego wymiaru, bez oglądania się na to, co powiedzą lub pomyślą inni. Jeżeli podoba Wam się ten lub podobają Wam się inne nasze filmy, dajcie nam o tym znać. 
komentarz, lajk i subskrypcja będą naprawdę mile widziane. Jeśli chcecie nas wesprzeć w tworzeniu kolejnych filmów, to w opisie znajdziecie linki do Patronite i Buy Coffee, na którym możecie postawić nam wirtualną kawę. Dzięki, trzymajcie się, dobrego dnia.